Well, here's the good news. There is a way to have an extraordinary life without causing extraordinary pain to people around you. There is a way that we can be content with where we are, where we aren't, and where we want to be. In fact, the Bible teaches that we can find contentment. Paul said, I learned to be content. That's possible for you and it's possible for me. Imagine waking up one morning and finding that the trajectory of our lives, the trajectory of the ordinariness of our lives had changed overnight. Imagine we went to bed on a certain plane of regular and routine and then waking up the next day in a totally new direction, even though, even though your circumstances have not yet changed, even though the circumstances of our lives have not yet changed, you have changed. And your life is going in a totally new direction because that can happen. That can happen to each and every one of us. And here's how. Extraordinary, extraordinary happens when you and I get in sync with the God who made us, when we get in sync with our Creator. Right now, I don't know if you've seen the commercials on TV. There's a big battle raging between Apple commercials and uh, PC commercials. And the guy comes on and says, hey, I'm a, I'm a Mac. And the other guy comes on and says, hey, I'm a PC. And then as the commercials unfold, the PC ends up looking less than the Mac. It's kind of a war between these two different operating systems. And really, it describes the same war that I think is going on within each of our souls. There is a battle for which operating system we are going to run our lives off of. And this trying to run an off the operating system of a relationship with God is not going to make any sense if we're operating off an operating system based on our world. So there's this battle about which operating system are we going to do life with. And we have this opportunity to break out of what is ordinary into something that is extraordinary. And that process begins when we choose the operating system, getting in sync with the God who made each one of us. Now there are some real basic components to how this process begins to unfold in our lives. And these basic components, I think, were first revealed to me back in philosophy class when I was forced to write the worldview, my worldview, how I viewed life and how I viewed the world, something I'd never thought about. But when I took that class and I was forced to write it, um, this assignment, assignment was incredibly, had an incredible impact on me because it was uh, my first introduction to what I'm getting ready to share with you right now. And it's, here's the deal. What we believe, what we believe ultimately impacts what we do, which ultimately impacts the outcomes of our lives. What we believe will ultimately impact uh, what we do our decisions, which will ultimately impact the outcomes of our lives. The formula looks just like this. Belief leads to decisions. Which leads Belief, what we believe, leads to decisions, which leads to outcomes. Let me see if I can explain to you how this works. If we have a belief, say, that broccoli is going to make us healthy, then we make a decision to eat broccoli. Well, the outcome, we think, is that we are going to be healthy. But then we get going through life and we realize, you know, there's only so many ways you can cook broccoli. And no matter how you cook it, it still tastes an awful lot like broccoli. We still believe broccoli is going to make us healthy. However, we make a decision to grab a bag of salted potato chips. We still believe broccoli is going to make us healthy, but we decide to eat potato chips. And this is where we go. Because we think we will be able to manage the outcome of our lives and still make ourselves healthy. Let me take it on a little more serious issue. We believe that 
alcohol can be a dangerous substance for us, especially if it is abused. We all would believe that the abuse of alcohol is, is a wrong thing. So we may believe that, but then we decide, we decide to indulge ourselves a little bit, and here's why. Because we think we can manage the outcome. Now that scenario just describes so many different things in our lives. How much time we spend at work. We believe this is good. We decide to do this because we think we can manage. How much we eat. We believe so much is important. We, th we decide to eat so much because we think we can manage the outcome. Um, we believe that this is an addictive behavior. But we decide to do it anyway because we think we can manage the outcome. But this whole process of belief and decisions and outcomes, this whole process, this whole process is the reality that you and I are faced with on a daily basis in a hundred different ways. And as we think about doing a mind sweep together, as we think about taking what is very ordinary and making it into something extraordinary, this is where we have to start. What it starts with, and this is the whole basis for this series, it'll start with a new belief, a new belief that will produce new decisions, that will ultimately produce extraordinary outcomes. You cannot maintain a faulty belief system, make a good decision, and expect a good outcome. We cannot have a faulty belief system driving the whole thing. The way it'll work, the way mind sweep will be effective for each of us, is if we can change our beliefs make decisions to match those new beliefs and then that will produce extraordinary outcome. And all of us are guilty of focusing on the last two and neglecting the first. Well for the next four weeks we're going to take that first one on head on. We're going to work hard at our beliefs and trying to clear up what it is we understand and think. Now Jesus was absolutely brilliant. He was the greatest teacher to ever walk the earth and yeah he had the whole Son of God thing going for him so but he also understood the human psyche. And he knew how we operated in this system. And he knew what made us tick. He knew it wasn't just about decisions that would produce outcomes. He knew it was about beliefs. And Jesus could say things succinctly and clearly right to the point. Listen to these scriptures, what Jesus, say, Jesus said about beliefs. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 